Oh my gosh, all the pro athletes I've worked with, when we go in and do the pelvic floor neuromuscular repatterning and help them tune into that, because literally when you touch someone, you're turning on that awareness, right? So you're bringing them back into that body, into the body, and that imprint stays with you forever. Like when I worked with the athletes, they were able, like they were like, oh my God, one of the benefits is that I can literally like go so much longer in the bedroom. Let alone, they also were also be able to jump higher and have quicker um, reaction time. So they're more, because it's literally an upgrade. It's an upgrade in the Wi-Fi of that part of your body. You're listening to Sex with Emily. I'm Dr. Emily, and I'm here to help you prioritize your pleasure and liberate the conversation around sex. One of the most important pillars of sexual intelligence or sex IQ is embodiment. Well, today's guest knows a thing or two about connecting with your body for a better life and better sex. Best-selling author and wellness educator Lauren Roxborough, also known as the Body Whisperer, teaches us how to listen to our bodies, simple exercises to reduce pain and heighten orgasms, how to work with changing hormones, and so much more. Please rate and review Sex with Emily wherever you listen to the show. It's super easy to do. You can do it right now wherever you're listening to this podcast on that platform. Just rate us. My new article, How to Orgasm During Missionary, is up on sexwithemily.com. All right, everyone, enjoy this episode. By now, you've probably heard my magic wand story. It's a brand that's been part of my personal journey for more than 20 years. But no matter how many times I sing magic wand's praises, I'll never be able to fully capture the story of this incredible brand. Well, now journalist and author Kate Sloan just completed a limited audio series documenting the history and impact that Magic One has created over the last 56 years. It's called Making Magic. And the series chronicles Magic One's incredible brand story through interviews with nearly 40 experts, performers, business owners, educators, and fans. So I got a sneak preview of the series. And what I loved is that Kate weaves together snippets from all their interviews into this amazing story arc. She covers Magic Wand's journey from appliance store massager to its legendary influence on culture and sexual independence. And it's all just fascinating. The first episodes of Making Magic are available now at makingmagicseries.com or on all popular podcast platforms. Just search for Making Magic or visit makingmagicseries.com today. Hey, Lo. (laughs) I'm really excited that you're here. I need you to pop our fascia cherry today. Yes. You are an expert on fascia. Mm-hmm. You are the expert on fascia. And you know, you explain as the organ of feeling and perception. So can you please just explain what fascia is? Because it's really going to lay the groundwork for our talk today. I would love to. So fascia has always been my love language. I didn't realize it until I actually started studying it about 15 years ago when I went to a school about structural integration. And what I discovered is that, you know, we know we know fascia is like this scaffolding of our body. It's like this kind of spider webbing that envelops the entire part of us. It weaves through every cell of our body and intersects and connects with every system of our body which means it's intersecting and communicating with our nervous system, our endocrine system, our hormones, our digestive system, to name a few. There's 12. I won't name all of them. (laughs) But it's an incredibly important system. And what it is, you know, technically it's this kind of um, the stuff that you would see when you open up a chicken. Okay. You know, when you have like a chicken, you buy at the store, you see that white stuff? Yeah. So that's what fascia looks like. It's like the glue of the body. When you see that the fascia of the chicken, though, it's um, that's in a dead body, obviously. <laughs> Our fascia looks better than that. It does <laughs> it, when we're alive. So what, what we've now realized is that it's not just the scaffolding that's holding us up and giving us shape and form. It's actually... It's um, a communication network inside of our bodies, sending and receiving information, sound, light, frequency, energy, and cellular nutrition, cellular hydration, and even emotions. So it's this incredible webbing that is Mm. in all of us. The superficial fascia lays right underneath the skin and above the muscles. It wraps around each individual muscle, kind of like a saran wrapping. Mm. It also weaves through our organs, our viscera. So when our fascia gets congested and dried up and brittle, that's what we call aging. 
What I believe is that fascia is the fountain of youth for, for many reasons. Now, the other big thing that's happening right now is that if you know anything about Chinese medicine, acupuncture, so that deals with our energy. Well, it turns out that our meridians, where we get the needles put in, lives in the fascia. That's where the energy is moving through us. So if you believe in energy, how could we not? We're right. all energetic We're all energy. beings, mm -hmm. right? And what's so exciting about that is that when you create freedom and flow and bring hydration into your fascia, you can start living in your body again and start tuning in to the sensations. And so now we know fascia also in the new science, like we said, that was the dead piece of fascia okay. you see in the chicken. Okay. We now have cameras and technology that can see fascia in a living body. And so this is where the medical paradigm will actually never be the same because we now know that it's a site of biological activity. It's even being considered now the sixth sense, the sense of feeling. So now we, not, we know, you know, all of our five yeah. senses, sight, sound, taste, and touch. And then now we know that like skin is to touch, fascia is to feeling and so it's the sixth sense and it's where we feel everything. It's where our body feels arousal. Mm. It's where our body feels pain and it's how our body communicates with us. So there's this incredible secret language happening within our bodies wow. and it's all happening in the fascia. <laughs> so how come we don't know about fascia? Like if people, I think people are starting to hear about it a little bit more and you were the first person who introduced me to fascia. Yeah. When we first met, it was you have your rollers that people buy. Like, yes. you know, everyone's into foam rolling, or maybe totally. they should be. But you were the first one who like gave me one, and it was like we're going to work together on. If anyone's done this, you've had sore muscles or at the gym they have it. You roll, and that's where I was first feeling like where I first understood it that it's actually yes. we can access it, we can move the energy through our bodies and deal with pain. So, but why why don't we? Yeah, why do we know about it? Like, what is this it? This is what, such a great to, question. Yeah, I mean, the rolling is great, and I'm a big believer in it. That's called myofascial release because that's just very superficial, and so that's working with like the the muscular fascia. Okay. But now, because we know it's, and this is something that I've been on a mission to learn more about and read all the new scientific studies and you know, collaborate with other scientists as well in the space to understand it more, to realize that it's in it's touching every cell of us, and so. What's really remarkable about that is that fascia, the reason why we don't know about it is because in, for some reason, something happened in the early 1900s where there was a division of church and state. And that means that church was going to just be more of the spiritual side of, you know, us humans. And then the state was like, we'll take over the bodies. And so for some reason, I can't really explain mm -hmm. it. But they just started disregarding fascia in di dissections in medical school. They thought it was just the packing wrap of our bodies. They just threw it away. It was they like never the investigated it. Was like those, it. Those, those, those styrofoam popcorn exactly. things. They're like, we'll just or throw yeah, it away. Or yeah, your saran wrapping, yeah. <laughs> your plastic wrapping, right? We don't need that. We don't need to study that. We need to get to the bones and the organs and the muscles and da-da-da. So that's where the real change happened. And something <sighs> happened in that time. But before that the father of osteopathy. So if you've ever had an osteo session, he was alive in the late 1800s, early 1900s. He coined the term that the soul of a man's being resides in the fascia. Mm. And so when you think back that someone already knew this back then, and then something divided us and took us in two different directions. And then Western medicine, of course we need it, but we've been numbing. We've been just giving people pills. We've been, you know, filling voids and turning off the sensations. So that way we can't feel our soul. So we've been numbing ourselves. So bringing it back around to realizing that when we start working with our fascia, we can actually connect again to our consciousness, or some people might call it the soul. So what I've seen as a body worker in my career is that when we get, or if you apply pressure with a roller or any tool, that you actually can get the person's consciousness to come back into these areas to actually live in their body again. And that will awaken your intuition. It will awaken your gut instincts. It will help you connect to your authentic self again. And then that's when you become magnetic mm. and you attract anything and everything that is meant to be in this lifetime for you. It is profound. And the magnetic energy, you know, we're electromagnetic beings. 
The electric part is the masculine. The magnetic part is the feminine. Most of us have been living more in the masculine. And so the, the fascia to me is helping rise consciousness on the planet and bring more of the feminine in because the feminine is the feelings. Feelings are the feminine energy and that's the magnetic energy. So our thoughts are electric. Our feelings are magnetic. Thoughts are masculine. The magnetic is the feminine, and that's where we create this amazing balance. And we've been living in just the thoughts. We've been living in our head. We've been living in the cerebral mind for too long. We've been living in control and force, try to make it happen, do, do, do. It served us, but we're now fatigued, and now we're ready for the feminine to rise, not to take over, but to create balance. It's not about the feminine or women only. This is the feminine energy in us all. And this is where fascia is the bridge to connect us back to our feelings. I talk a lot about embodiment and being in our yes. bodies and being, which is what kind of work you do. What I love about this is that we are so heady, like you're saying, we are yes. trying, even in meditation, which I think is very important. But when you can add a movement to that, mm. when you can add the, you know, the fascia and getting into your body well, that's what's going to help people get out of this disassociation they might have, yes. the numbing that you're talking about. It reminds me of the clitoris in a way. So the mm, clitoris wasn't in, <laughs> yeah, here's why. Yes. The clitoris was also understudied and mm -hmm. wasn't even any medical journals until like 1992 oh, or 1998 because they decided it wasn't important. Men and women are now wow. this, we can study the penis, we can study the, the vagina, but we missed it. We totally missed it. So that's why we have to play so much catch up. And I feel like you're doing that with fascia right now. How is it impacting our ability to have pleasure in our life? Is it stealing our pleasure? And then how can we ground it and get in touch with our fascia so we can have more? Oh, there's so <laughs> many good nuggets there. I love it. I mean, I think, yeah, we're coming back home. We're coming back home to our body the way it's really meant to be. We're coming back home to our power. The power we have within us is so incredibly powerful. Like the same energy that created our life is there available to us at any time and we've just forgotten. And so when we come back to the feelings and we can tune in to become more sensual and we do this through, I mean, one of my favorite things is to do it with the body elixir because it works with the olfactory. So this is the oil I've created a few years ago and it's called the body elixir. It's a magical potion. And so we use scent to bring us back to our senses. And this scent is a really powerful piece to come back to the present moment and to have moments of awe. How do we come back? Like if we wanna have amazing sex, we need to be present and we need to be embodied and not disassociated. And the other thing about fascia is that trauma gets stuck in our tissues as well. And then that creates an actual vibration, a frequency, that lowers our vibration or maybe even attracts certain things. So, but the thing that we've forgotten is that we have the power to shift that and to move those energies out. And like Gabor Mate's work, I know you're a fan mm -hmm. of his work as well. Trauma is not what happened to us. It's how our body dealt with what happened to us. And when we think of it that way and we know it's true, we have power. There is so much power in that to realize we have the power to alchemize these experiences that we go through and actually integrate them and have compassion and they become part of us. Instead of denying them and trying to shove them under the fascia carpet, <laughs> what I've found in my work and also the new re the people that are on the cutting edge of this this new thing that's opening this whole like like all the science all the people in the healing world are finally coming together with doctors and scientists just and we're all seeing the same thing chinese medicine ayurveda all the ancient wisdoms have known this for a long time we're coming back to this and what we're realizing is that fascia is the organ of perception it's like literally experiencing and recording every memory every experience everything we go through it is recording everything and it's protecting us it's going oh i shouldn't go there or i need to take a deep breath or i need to eat or i need water it's keeping us alive and so when we have traumatic times in our lives whatever our nervous system and our conscious mind can't handle at that moment then gets stored in our subconscious mind and so now we believe that the fascia is the subconscious mind you cannot change the past but you can create a new future and you do that by realizing, like, I went through something really shitty 
And I, I don't want to be defined by that for the rest of my life. I don't want to carry that around with me like a bag of coals. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be vibrating my magnetic energy to keep attracting the same thing. I would even call it the, the trauma roundabout. We can get stuck on the trauma Mm -hmm. roundabout and I'm not, I'm not being uncompassionate. What I'm showing is that I know there's time that need that needs to be processed, but the experience that we go through, we cannot change the past. So we need to integrate it and and somehow be able to accept that it's part of us and to be okay with that being part of us as humans. And maybe we maybe we turn that pain into purpose. Maybe we do something amazing with that. And maybe that makes us walk our true path. I mean, that's why I'm doing this work because of my story. My mom died of breast cancer. I wanted to learn why do people get cancer? Mm. I turned my pain into purpose. And now I feel like I want to share this with so many more people. Maybe you could explain perhaps how you would work with someone who came to you because we haven't even gotten to the pelvic floor yet, but it's all connected, of course. But I think that there's such magical work you do with the pelvic floor. But for example, if you've had a trauma and you go to therapist, which I believe that everybody benefits from therapy, especially if you've had a trauma of any kind. So now we've recognized it. Mm-hmm. But what are some of the things that we that we do or how you work with people to help them? How do we know that we're releasing it? What do we do? And it starts with our so fascia? Good. Absolutely. So what we do is turn on the neuromuscular pathways. We rewire our body. Our body from the brain to the body, from the body back to the brain. Because what happens is If we are not processing that trauma at that moment, it will then be stored. And what happens is we then disassociate or become numb. Maybe pain will start residing there, a lot of tension, a lot of thickness, density, inflammation, which leads to congestion, which then can lead to disease. So the energy likes to pool around those areas, and then the muscles start to weaken. The nerves start to shut down. So then you lose tone there or you Mm -hmm. become hypertonic, which means you're overly tight and you're overly clenched. And then when you're clenched, then you try to go and have sex and you have pain during sex. The clenching, can you talk a little bit about the pelvic floor clenching that we don't really know that we're doing it, right? Because there are so many women who have pain during sex or just pain in general and they are like, I don't know why. But can you talk about the role of the pelvic floor in that? Yes. So much is happening down there (laughs) subconsciously. So the subconscious, like even it's, it's the whole connection from the cranium to the sacrum. Okay. And that's where the base of the core, sometimes I'll call it the pelvic floor, right? So it's a hammock of muscles that attaches your sits bones, your pubic bone and your tailbone. And this area of the body can get really tight because Anytime we get to a traffic jam or we get that, you you know, you run into someone, you're like, oh, I don't like that person's energy. Or you get um, that stressful phone call or email. We subconsciously clutch ourselves. We if well, if we're not aware. And this is something, let me tell you, it takes one to know one because I was like I've mentioned to you before, my teacher, when I first learned this pelvic floor release, it's like popping a cork. Literally, when I learned this, I, my, my teacher was like, you have one of the t- tightest pelvic floors and jaws he had ever seen. It's because I was an athlete growing up okay. and I was like a really competitive swimmer and water polo player. And so I was like all about force and pushing through and making it happen. So this is why I feel like I can talk about yeah, this because I've been it. there and I've had are, right? so much lower back pain, hip pain, stiffness. I mean, I could barely do a yoga class. I was so wound up. My jaw was so tight. My face looked different. My symmetry looked different. And so as I started to realize, how do we release this through either touch, through like actual body work, or through using a tool? So, you know, I use the body sphere and we use the body sphere, which is a squishy ball. And you sit on it and you can get the neuromuscular connections to come back and rewire so you can start as we were saying earlier, start living in that part of your body again. So your you soul and we're your gonna, consciousness. And we're going to do, um, do a little video that we're going to point you guys to. We'll put it in the That'll show That'll be notes. super helpful. Really getting into the meridians and the lymph system that helps flush out like and the energy and emotions. So it helps flush out emotions. Like around for women, we have so much heaviness and density in our hips because it's where 
our joints, you know, we have a lot of muscles intersecting. It's like a traffic jam. So anytime there's mm-hmm. a lot of muscles coming in to attach to around a joint, that's a real area where can, it can get congested and emotions can live in the joints. And so we work with the domes, the spiky ones on that area and the inner thighs. And then we sit on the ball and move our hips around the ball. And then that just opens up and expands that hammock of muscles, the deep core. It's mm-hmm. like the base of the core, the pelvic core. I mean, it's everything though. I mean, I remember when you were first on the show, the power, your book had come out, the power yes. source. She's literally talking about your pelvic floor. That is where the power is. Yes. That's where our sexual energy lies, our creativity. But since it is this central part of our bodies, it gets misaligned. The alignment piece is really key because then that force of energy can pulse through us more efficiently. I love to say that when you start working with your fascia, you get these incredible physical, biomechanical, physiological benefits. It's like getting an upgrade. You know, I love saying that fascia is like the Wi-Fi of our body, (laughs) sending and receiving this information. And so, you know, I mean, you know what it's like when you have slow Wi-Fi. Yeah. It's, it's terrible. A nightmare. We can't even handle so it for two seconds. And we, most of us are living with slow. We're living with di- so most of us are living with dial up right now. There you go. Dial up. We are I've living never, with dial up. That's perfect. I love that. We are living with dial up Wi-Fi. We were like living in the 90s yeah, or whenever totally. that was 2000s. And by rolling, sitting, doing some of the, the stretching, taking one of your courses, we can Immediate. learn to kind of get it back online, get it back to high speed internet. Yeah, high speed. And even I would say too, I mean, well, the way I look at it, you've got the Wi-Fi in the body, which is sending all the information to the brain, which is the computer processing center. So, but we've been doing everything from the computer instead of the, you know, getting the information. So I'm like, we need to do the opposite. I'm just thinking about the benefits of doing it throughout our life. Like if you took two to three minutes, I mean, I feel like that some of your work is just, oh, you don't have to just like commit, I'm doing it for an hour a day. No. It could just exactly. be, I'm going to do this one move. I'm going to look to the left. I'm going to look to the right. I'm going to mm-hmm. move my hands up and down. And then you'll feel your whole body, right, start to sort of go back online in the way that you want it to. I love Would you that say you that's- said back online. Yeah. That's it. Because we're running our energy through our body. And so if we want to show up in the world with like good energy, which who doesn't want that, right? Yeah. Then we have to do something every day to move. It literally is... It's called piezoelectric energy. It's piezoelectricity. So in our fascia also, like we were saying, you know, the meridians are in the fascia, but that means it's basically electricity. And the reason that is, is because, you know, fascia is made out of collagen and elastin, but it's also wrapped with a shell of water. So the water, it's like if you put your hair dryer in, in a bathtub, right? You're going to get electrocuted. Right. So the water shell is how sometimes people call it a liquid crystal. It's how the electricity goes through us. So we're talking about circulation here because this is yes. why I think this is so crucial for people to understand that yeah. most of the challenges, and we're going to get into some questions here, but most of the challenges that people are facing in the bedroom, if it's an orgasm, whether you have your yes. penis or a vulva, you are probably having a blood flow challenge or a circulation yes. challenge because you're not going to be able to get aroused. You're not going to get erection or you have pain because you are like clenching and everything's tight. It's all like circulation, blood flow. So it would come from that. And energy. And energy. And energy is blocked too. So the feelings and the motions. If you had a trauma, you've been clenching and you are holding stuff in and you haven't been moving your body in these ways that we're talking about, you're going to have some challenges. And I can talk to you about it all day, but the body part is what's missing is the movement. Mm. And I always say like, you've got to be exercising, but maybe it's just not the right kind. If you're only spinning or you're only like, it's really, yeah. we get tighter. It might almost be like that could help with some blood flow, but we're talking about this deep internal body right. work. And the way you get into the subconscious and the embodiment piece is you can't do it when you're in fight or flight. You can't do it when you're in sympathetic with the nervous system. So if for someone that knows themselves a little bit, maybe they, mm-hmm. they are like stressed. So you take like two minutes and you do like you massage your ears to tap into your vagus nerve, which brings you into the more calming state of the nervous system, which is about rest, digest and heal and coming into your body again. And the vagus nerve also opens up compassion. It also opens up just getting into your body again. So yeah, ear rubbing, you can do the neck rubbing here because the vagus nerve goes from the ears down through the neck, down through the heart and down to the gut and to the pelvic floor. Because if you really do believe, you know, Nikolai Tesla's quote, 
If you want to know the secrets of the universe, you got to start thinking in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Mm -hmm. So if you want real intimacy, which I know not everybody does, but if you want really good sex, aligning yourself with the being in front of you on all these levels brings you into your body, into the moment, and into the deepest connection you could feel. I think most people do want deeper connected sex. And most people probably do want intimacy. They just don't know how to get there. Yeah. And you could be talking, try reading all the books and trying mm-hmm. to meditate and maybe in therapy with your partner. But this is the stuff that if you are live in a stress state most of your life or you are in fight or flight, it's actually impossible to have pleasure and arousal in the same moment that you're living in stress or fight or flight. Yeah. And so this is the kind of like – tools and tips that will help you get there. And you don't have mm-hmm. to do it on your own. You could do it with a partner or a friend. I feel like you are personifying embodiment here in a way that I just mm-hmm. think is so important for people to understand. Because I try and maybe I, you're like, Emily, we get it already, but I don't know. Like, I'm like, this is another level, <laughs> another layer that I want people to really. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. The embodiment piece has been something that I've been working on. Like, I, I feel like we can know a lot of things in our head, But if we're not living it and breathing it, and that's, to me, the most important piece, Mm -hmm. we have to be what we want to attract. And one of the best gifts that I ever got in my lifetime, the advice I had after I went through my divorce, went through my perfect storm, (laughs) which we can talk about, the best advice, and I know it sounds so cliche and people will roll their eyes, but fall in love with yourself Mm -hmm. before you do anything else because then everyone else will fall in love with you. Mm. And that is not from an ego place. That is not, it is a humble confidence. Fall in love with the best parts about you. Same thing we talked about earlier with trauma. Trauma, we can't change the past. We can't really change certain things about us, especially the more you get to know yourself, the more you can fall in love with yourself and honor that. And then you can be the best person, reach your highest potential and be the change we want to see in the world. Be the change. It's true. Really. Be it. But the the being is the embodiment piece. Yeah. You can say everything. Your energy introduces you before you walk in the door. So I would rather bring good vibes where I go. And so I use affirmations a lot in the morning, like right when we wake up in the morning Mm -hmm. is a great time. And that's why I like to weave these things in. They're so easy. They're things that you're already doing. You're going to go to sleep. You're going to wake up. Yeah. How do we weave it in? So the first thing in the morning is this opportunity when you're asleep and you're, there's like a few minutes between when you're back in your conscious mind, your monkey mind. That's when our subconscious is more available. So take that moment and start reprogramming your subconscious in the morning. Like I'll say, I am love. I embody radiance, I embody joy, I am here to make the world better, whatever you want to bring into your body, into your essence, into your being and start vibrating. This is like it not works, woo-woo that's at all. What you are. I know, it's really not. And <laughs> you are the most woo-woo. like brightest, like happy, like this is how you are. So it's I like- I mean, it's taken a while to get here, let me tell you. I know, you, you actually do it. And I, <laughs> I have the affirmations in my phone. I don't do them all the time. But when I have the days or weeks or months where it's steady, because if you think about it, also if you're somebody who has a lot of negative self-talk, yes. if you're replacing it with more positive affirmations, you, you also are rewiring it. That's why it's so important to have the affirmations. And that's the consciousness piece. Mm-hmm. And the consciousness piece is the- the key in to the embodiment. You got to have the consciousness to get to the feeling, right? Yes, absolutely. To feel the feelings. We're so, we're so, we're just walking around in, in unconscious, many of us. Many. And that's okay because we're getting there. The popcorn is popping. Lots of people are <laughs> popping awake. What I love for your audience to hear too is the benefits are like the radiance that you can, like, I love the word radiance for like women over 40, especially mm-hmm. because it's like, it's not like, oh, you want to have glowing skin that feels so superficial. Like radiance is a magnetic energy of like, you can see someone is juicy. Like they have this <laughs> radiance in their eyes, on their skin. And it's not about being young. It's about being whole. Okay. So I'm sure I get a lot of questions from people who have pain during sex. And I always say, maybe go to a pelvic floor physical therapist that could help you release some pain. But it's sort of complex. Not everyone's pain is the same, but many people don't even know what the pelvic floor is, why it matters, how it's impacting our pain a little bit. So you do all the work on people. A lot of people can get people to strengthen and stabilize their pelvic floor. So what can a strong, stable pelvic floor do for your sex life? Ooh, great question. So there's a few different layers to this. So 
the pelvic floor gets tight from, it can be from like after having a baby and the way your body has healed. It can be from that subconscious clutching down there. I like to call it the on off stress button. Sometimes the pelvic floor is like, we don't realize it, but we're just like white knuckling our way. Like we'll actually be white knuckling. Some people sleep like that with their fists like that, or their jaw like clench the whole time, or you're having crazy dreams. And so you're locking everything. And then that's also locking down in the pelvic floor. So that tightness and tension is going to create a blockage. And so like we were talking about early earlier, the pain is a message. So we don't want to numb the pain. Remember, the pain is your beautiful body speaking to you for attention. So pain is just the way your body is saying, I mean, it's it's actually a portal to transformation. If you think about it, pain can be a portal to transformation if you allow it to be. So we have to reframe our whole relationship we really to pain. We really do. So if we've got a bad bat, we're trying to numb it. We're taking a pill. We're doing something. You're yes. saying the pain has messages. It, it has major messages. Mm-hmm. And always, I will say that pain, wherever the pain is in the body, isn't the only place to address. So it, it can be meaning in your other places in your body to address, like your jaw or your feet or your inner thighs or your hips. But also there's always something else there in the life that needs to be addressed. I shouldn't say always, many (laughs) times, many times there's other things that need to be addressed when, whether it's emotional, because the emotions get stuck in there, wrapped up. The emotions just, they like to lodge themselves in the areas where we have, you know, congestion, just like lymph. The lymph nodes so are goes, in the fascia. It's like, oh, I'm going to go right down to the pelvic. I'm just going to sit there. I'm just going to sit there. It makes it more predisposed to issues. We call it issues in the tissues. It's, this is why we. <laughs> this is why we say that. Okay, so, so yeah. pain during sex is something that usually is from having too much tightness down there mm-hmm. and not have be, not being in receive mode, not able to be in receive mode, which is the feminine. Mm. So the feminine is the nurturing, and the, you need to be open, right? So I love, I actually love practicing the reverse Kegel. Okay. So people think that you need to do the Kegel, yeah. but it's actually the reverse Kegel is needed as well. So we can do it together yeah, right what's now. The, let's do a reverse Kegel. Okay. okay. So we have to uncross our legs. Okay. That's right. <laughs> we can do that. And it's literally like, no one will see us. You can do this anytime, anywhere. Okay. I recommend people to do it like while they're driving at a stop sign. So you just do a little, okay. so what you do, the visual, close your eyes so that you can go into your body, into your interoception, into your connection to what's happening inside of you. Okay. And then just do a little squeeze. Everyone knows how to do a Kegel pull. They might it. not. Oh. I, we got, we, like, so I always say it's okay, like the pee perfect. stopping muscles where you stop and start the flow of urine. Perfect. So if you're like all of a sudden someone's knocking on the bathroom door and you want to stop peeing, like it's that muscle. Yes. Stop it. Cut the pee off Cut midstream. Cut the pee off mo- Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. <laughs> and that's actually hard to do. So okay. really trying to not use like your core or your butt as much, but just picture that but- hammock of muscles, right? The pubic bone to the tailbone and then the two sitting bones. Okay. So it's like a, like a hammock. And then you're going to squeeze that. You're going to pull it up and in like a rosebud, sucking it up into your core. Okay. You'll notice your jaw feels tight or your shoulders. Hold on to it. And then slowly let it go. This is the reverse Kegel. Let it go one more layer like a flower blossoming. Visualize that. I love the visual. Yeah, that's That's key, right? Because we all learn so differently that when you you throw in the visual part of it, that really helps the flower. Yes, and I have like audio um, meditations that do this, but we'll do it again one more time. So pull it up and in. Squeeze. And then let it go and expand like a flower. And then before we shift into something else, take a deep breath. As you breathe in, your diaphragm presses down into your organs. Your organs drop down into your pelvic floor. And your pelvic floor naturally expands like the blossom. And then as you exhale, everything just naturally comes up. This is how our body pumps the cerebral spinal fluid through our body from our cranium to our sacrum. That fluid also feeds the brain nutrients and helps flush the brain of toxins. Wow. So there you go. Oh my God. Yeah. I felt I felt the tension and then I just felt it all like Melt, released right? my body. Yeah. So when you realize that you're when you take those breaths with awareness, you the breathing, I think a lot of people don't realize that breath is like the pelvic floor is totally connected to breath. People just talk about the lungs. I'm like, no, no, you gotta breathe is- down in, into the flower blossoming. And then it'll take longer. And then you start living in that part of your body again. That's the embodiment piece. Mm. When we talk about disassociation or disconnection, a lot of us walk around just completely disconnected to that part of our body. So learning to do some of these 
breathing exercises, even if it's just a few minutes a day or so, when you yes. want to be more turned on or in the mood, it is a game changer. Because if you think about it, that might have been the first time for many people just to get that connection, but that's how you directly connect it. And it helps to visualize the part that we're talking about because that's yes. that's where you're going to get more. If you guys wanted more sexual pleasure, more orgasms, that is the first step is connecting to it. Take a deep breath, feel your body, and Lauren and I will be right back after a quick break. But first, you know one of my favorite ways to get in tune with my body? Well, I love a little THC and CBD. And I'm not alone. There have been so many studies that show that people who use weed, they have more frequent sex, they have more orgasms, and they're able to let go and really be in their bodies and not distracted by everything else going on in the world. Cannabis enhances our senses and it also alleviates some of the symptoms that inhibit our desire, like anxiety or sleeplessness or pain. So if you want to heighten your pleasure and incorporate cannabis into your sex life, I highly recommend Via Hemp Company's High Love THC Libido Gummies. These are a game changer. You can easily take the dose that works for you, and they're an adorable little bottle. And I also love their sleep gummies. We're a gummies family. We use their gummies for everything here, so check them out. The Libido Gummies have THC, CBD, and aphrodisiac herbs that get your blood flowing, waken your senses, ignite pleasure. So when I use these during sex, I just feel everything more. I'm not thinking about anything that's going to happen next. I'm just super present in my body. Every touch feels different. Orgasms feel stronger. I just feel more embodied. That's what it's about. And if a little weed helps you do that, great. Figure out what works for you to be embodied because the opposite of that is disassociated and not being able to be present and enjoy sex. Because remember, sex is about pleasure. Remember all that? So spice up your love life with Via Hemp Company's High Love THC Libido Gummies. Visit viahemp.com and use the code EMILY to get 15% off your order. They'll also throw in a free sample of their award-winning gummies. You must be in the United States to order. That's viahemp.com. Use code EMILY at checkout. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, Lo, will you help me answer some questions here yes. from our listeners? I think that these would be right up your alley. This is from another Emily, 27 in Orange County. Hey, Dr. Emily, I've listened to the podcast for years. I'm a huge fan of the show and information shared on this platform. So I've been sexually active for about 10 years. This last year, I started having bad pain, stabbing, pain, cramping. My current partner is well endowed, about eight inches. I've been to the gyno several times and had ultrasounds, worried I had endometriosis, PCOS, fibroids, or something else going on. None of that seemed to be the case. However, I was told that I have a tilted uterus, which could explain the pain during sex on top of having a larger than average partner. I am perplexed by the fact that I've had sex for almost a decade without having this pain and it's just starting recently. It has made sex difficult as I feel like I'm always worried or stressed about being in pain or something hitting the wrong way. It's also annoying as positions that used to be my favorite are some of the most painful. Mm. I'm looking for advice positions that can help those with a tilted uterus above average partner. I'm hearing having a tilted uterus is fairly common. So hoping I can help others struggling with a similar issue. So I think there's a few things. She's had the uterus, but I think also having a larger partner, a larger mm -hmm. penis now is mm -hmm. going to be hitting her in ways that are just causing more pain than she's ever had before. She's probably always had a tilted uterus, but yeah. could you speak to that, the body structure of the uterus and maybe what, what's going on Absolutely. here? Absolutely. So first thing I would say is like, it's also probably has to do with his angle, mm -hmm. right? And where he's sitting. Yeah. Okay. But the tilted uterus thing is something that who knows if she's had it from day one, but there are, it's like someone that has scoliosis, you know, you can work through that. People heal themselves from, you know, you can, our organs are so malleable. And after, you know, as you get pregnant and you have a kid, you know, I mean, your organs are like all out of whack. And so you have to do a lot of work to get them back in. So actually doing things like inversions for her, working on getting her pelvis more aligned, like the doctors that saw that, they only were looking at one part of her. All right. If I saw her in front of me, I'd probably look at her feet, look at how her hips are, look at how her pelvis is aligned. Is it, um, does she have a pelvic torsion? Is one side of her hips more anterior, the other side more posterior? 
Um, how do we get some more space between her ribs and her hips to create that length? Because we all kind of end up like getting those love handles because we're so smushed from sitting too much. And that's, you know, muffin tops show up. You that's can get rid of those. Sitting. Yeah. Okay. So repositioning her organs and her structure, getting more length through her structure, like doing maybe some Pilates could be helpful for her. Doing some great body work could be amazing because she can't change his size, but she could maybe move her organs around a little bit and get more alignment and more space. So that's all it is. She needs a little more space for her beautiful man. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's so, okay. So that's and then also positions probably. There's other oh, positions yes. that she could find too. That's your putting, expertise. That's my expertise, <laughs> right? Putting a pillow um, there underneath, you go. like if he's on top, putting a pillow and elevating yourself, like under your doing bum, the pelvic your floor back. releases too would be huge, mm-hmm. like on the ball, just to open, like and also meditate on having more space in there and expanding that flower. I mean, we have people that gain an inch to an inch and a half in height from, I mean, that's why I call my first book Taller, Slimmer, Younger, because people were getting an inch to an inch and a half taller. Like it's not, it's like totally measurable. It's crazy. So so that's the body alignment (laughs) part of it. So could you, would you actually work with her? For example, could she see someone like, like you do? Yes. A structural integration practitioner would be phenomenal because they can get into the viscera and move the organs around. And it's it's the most amazing or almost orgasmic feeling too. It's I really- mean, it hurts at first. And then, but once you get it to open, your digestion changes, like your waist becomes thinner. A pelvic floor therapist could be helpful as well, because again, it could be something that's shown up more recently. There could be some more tension in there that could be related to stress or a psychosomatic thing or a trauma thing that's maybe leftover from the past. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I also think for positions too, don't go right into the same positions you always do. So having a pillow will help you elevate your pelvic floor. Spooning position is a great yes. one for this because you could, again, always still put, I just love pillows. They're the mm. most underrated sex accessory to That's use cool. to get you in the right position because a lot of us, since we are yeah. not that connected to what's happening during sex and we're not really feeling mm. what's going on, we tend to just re- go into the same position every time, but it's like not working for anymore. So mm-hmm. Emily, I could give you a few suggestions like spooning. It would be great or seeing how it works with him on the bed and you're with you on the bed and he's off the bed, play around with it and be conscious with him and say, Let, let's just play around and like try different angles. Mm-hmm. Because I think you're going to be able to find that in addition to doing some exercises, just sort of thinking like, what is a better place for us to be doing these certain positions? You'll be able to find a more comfortable place for you. But again, I don't think that we're just often intentional about our sex positions or about I sex at all. that's a great tip. Okay, so this is a big one. I was excited to talk to you about this, premature ejaculation. This is Derek. He's 43 in Ontario. Hey, Dr. Emily, I recently watched your interview with Mel and I loved your advice. I want to mm-hmm. ask my own questions. I've been with my wife for 20 years, married for 15. We have two children. And for the most part, I'm happy with our sex life. I suffer from premature ejaculation and have my whole life. I've tried several things over the years to resolve this issue with no success. When I was younger, my recovery time was much better, so it didn't bother me as much. Still embarrassing, but at least I could go again and last a little longer. Now that I'm older, this is not the case. I've learned over the years how to pleasure my wife through oral sex, which is what we do every time we have sex, so she's able to have a couple orgasms when we're intimate. She says it doesn't bother her. She's happy that she can please me so easily, but I hate it. I wish I could just enjoy the feeling of sex for more than just a minute without coming. And then check this out. Any advice we appreciated over the years, I read lots of literature and tried breathing exercises, kegel, squeeze technique, stop start technique, numbing gels, SSRI inhibitors, pressure points, tantric sex with strong kegels and pressure points you can divert your orgasm and not come. I thought I was onto something, but I'd lose my erection, so kind of defeated the purpose. Mm. I tried Viagra to see if I could last longer. I have no luck. Help me. I want to enjoy my partner better orgasms. Well, how cool is this guy, by He's the way? He's done it all. I I'm know, so proud right? of him I'm that so he really him wants this. He wants this it so badly. Beautiful. He's 43. I know. I love yeah. all the effort and work he's doing. But and- now- this is it. This is bringing him to start living in this part of his body again. All the things he mentioned, I mean, I wouldn't say all, but many of them sound very like creating more tension, more contraction down there. Which Kegels Remember can we do. Remember we were saying the, we yeah. need the reverse Kegel. We need the expansion. We need the visualization to open that area up. So for him, yes, even for men, we need to be able to release that clutch so that you can allow your body to be more connected down there. Turn on those neuromuscular connections again. And that's what gives you the ability to connect and hold it. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. And so is that what's first. happening for him? You think like, so the, he's premature ejaculate. There's a lot of different reasons why people do it. It's like, it could be habitual because it's been happening since like the first time he had sex and he's just been trying to correct yes. it. Yes. What would be his protocol? It's not just in one place. It's like this holistic. Everything's never in one you place, You know what I mean? Right? Like yeah. it's this armor. And so I, this is very typical in like the Western world. Like I had to study this when I was in my school for structural integration. And we had to study how people walk in different areas of the world. So like, for instance, in Brazil, they have so much more hip movement. They've got like more sensuality in just the way they walk. And in Africa, same thing. Then you go and watch people walking in the subway in the UK no offense <laughs> to our UK people. <laughs> Love you guys, the British people. But they look like they have a, like a stick up their ass. Literally a stick up So that. tight. Their hips aren't moving. Their organs aren't moving. There's no flushing happening. There's no juiciness happening down there. So the energy is just like, it's so sensitive, too sensitized. It's so not, we're not even walking right. So yeah. what, what, that's so amazing. even he's just in, he's in Canada. Your, I don't know how Canadians are. He's in Ontario. I think but it's very Western it as is well. Very Western. I mean, this is so more. So we're just stiff all around. We're yeah. uptight. We're stiff. Oh my gosh. All the pro athletes I've worked with, when we go in and do the pelvic floor neuromuscular repatterning and help them tune into that, because literally when you touch someone, you're turning on that awareness, right? So you're bringing them back into that body, yeah. into the body. And that imprint stays with you forever. So doing the work of the, like when I worked with the athletes, they were able, like, they were like, oh my God, one of the benefits is that. I can literally like go so much longer in the bedroom, let alone they also were also be able to jump higher and have quicker um, reaction time. So they're more, because it's literally an upgrade. It's an upgrade in the Wi-Fi of that part of your body. So going and finding someone that does the body work, a pelvic floor therapist or a structural integration person that and does- And he could do that as well. I always oh, think yeah. it's always women, but like that could no, really help these are male all athletes these I'm talking about. So he hasn't done that yet. He no, hasn't seen he hasn't done that a yet. Pelvic floor, would you say it's a pelvic floor physical therapist or a structural? I a structural? would go more in the structural integrative because that is like how you get into embodiment. Derek, so try that out and let us know. I want to yeah, be the one nice. that helps Derek because he's been on a journey. Yeah. He's 43. We're going to get him there. Okay, Derek, thank you. Sonia, she's 57 in Connecticut. Okay. Hello, Dr. Emily. I absolutely love your podcast. I never miss an episode. I am 57 wow. and post-menopause. I am on transdermal estrogen, estradiol, and oral progesterone. When sex became too painful, I started using Premarin, which is vaginal cream, as prescribed by my doctor. I also use them externally, especially in that painful six o'clock area. It's been over six months. There isn't any improvement. Penetration is also painful, and I actually frequently bleed. No amount of quality lube makes it more tolerable. My husband and I love each other dearly, but we don't even try anymore and we have zero sexual intimacy. He's also challenged with low testosterone mm. and insurance will only barely cover injections that he finds cumbersome and leaves him with pain at the injection site for some time. My question is twofold. Mm. Is my condition permanent and there is no hope? And is there anything besides injections that can help raise a man's testosterone? Thanks for all you do. Well, I think this is such a great question for you is because mm -hmm. she's doing all the things. She's on the hormones, which I am a fan of. I think that so many of us can benefit mm -hmm. from hormones. When we go through perimenopause, menopause, there's been a lot of misinformation about it, but mm -hmm. now we're realizing that this can be, really be beneficial. But she's still having pain and her husband's also suffering. So what would you think here? I've got a few thoughts. Okay. So the first thing I would say is acupuncture and herbs, Chinese herbs. There are some incredible herbs that you can take, you know, till the day you die that keep you young and youthful and supple and hydrated. And yeah, so that, because the acupuncture is helping with the chi, as we know, the energy, if you believe it or not. I mean, there's tons of research on it now. Yeah, so I love acupuncture. And then, you know, as we said They're earlier, taken. the meridians are in the fascia. And so Again, getting that, I think it's about getting that circulation and blood flow coming down into that area, turning on the nerves again, living in that part of your body again. And that might take a little bit of time to get into a practice with that. But a lot of people will feel their hormones regulate even more. And it doesn't matter what stage you're in. Like I have a lot of clients in the, that are over 70 that are women and they're ha they still have juiciness down mm -hmm. there because we've worked on that. And that's been an intention that they have. So maybe she should take one of your courses. Yes. The pelvic floor course would be amazing. Awaken the power of the pelvic floor. And that yeah. one's coming out, right? That's coming out soon. Yeah. Sign up for the wait list. <laughs> so you're hearing from people, say, women this age that you're working with. Yes. Through your studio, 
that they're like, I, I haven't felt this before. Because I'm with, it makes sense that the hormones would come back yeah. online. The nervous system is the one that is the big boss to all the other systems. There's all these other layers to her story yeah. and his actually, mm -hmm. which is really that how stressed are you and how often are you able to get into that parasympathetic state of rest, digest, and heal? Because when you do that, your nervous system goes, oh, I can secrete more hormones. I don't have to just be in like fight and fear mm -hmm. the whole time. That takes so much energy from you. Acupuncture can help tremendously for men, especially. And there's even specific herbs. There's an herb that stimulates testosterone for the men. They call it deer antler, okay, which is a specific Chinese herb that's like a game changer. I mean, nature has so much medicine. They do. <laughs> Chinese herbs is great for a lot of the um, perimenopause, menopausal symptoms. I remember when I first Absolutely. started having like night sweats. I yeah. went to acupuncturist. I took these. They stop like within a day, like this tea with this herb. It's in pretty, it. it can be really gnarly though, but it doesn't, not, it doesn't it taste, taste good. great, but it was like such a relief to know. Like, yeah, but we just, again, we just want a quick fix, go to our doctors, we get medications. It doesn't often work. So, yeah. and that's it fine sounds to like do all of that as well. It's all good. Yeah. But the rebounder could be helpful as well. Gentle bouncing just to kind of move that energy down there as well. Because when you bounce, you're giving every cell of your body a little massage. And also when you're bouncing, are you able to, does it help the whatever medications you're taking circulate more too? Is that part yeah. of it? Well, it, it helps. It makes sense. It helps discharge a lot of the toxic buildup that, you know, that we all build up, which then allows the real medicine to work better. Oh my God, Lo. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's very, very helpful. Is that enough for her? I think it is. Your condition is not permanent, Sonia, at all. Nothing is permanent. Yeah. And I think if you've learned anything today, there's so much that we can do that we haven't done yet. We haven't even tapped into yet. So yes. it is not permanent. Your first day of the rest of your life could be today if you're taking some of this knowledge in and realizing mm -hmm. there's changes you can make. So, so try some more bodies, some movement, some more work. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about how they can find you in a second low and take a course. And then is there anything besides injections? There's a lot of stuff about the nutrition can help mm -hmm. with testosterone, can help with hormones. Just, mm -hmm. But again, it's all holistic. Mm -hmm. So how is his mindset around it? Is he in fight or flight? I mean, if he's getting these shots and he has fear around it, like that's not going to help. How connected are you guys, you know, when you're having yeah. sex? How's your relationship? He could also take a cream though. If he doesn't want injections though, and he still wants testosterone, you could take testosterone cream and rub that on oh, instead of an injection great. if you really want it. There's like supplements and pills and then yeah. you could go see a a naturopath, you could go see a specialist, a urologist. So I'm just leaning into in this show into more of the, the body wisdom part, which I think is important. Mm, I would say another modality that I would recommend in this particular scenario would be cranial sacral, regulating the nervous system. And that will help all the other systems start to do what they're supposed to do more mm -hmm. efficiently because cranial we are meant- of the of the massaging our scalp or well, it, it's you going. It can energy? go all through. They start with the feet, but it's basically helping the nervous system regulate itself better. Okay. I love it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Lo. Thanks, Sonia, for your question. Uh, let us know how it goes. I have everyone just feeling inspired right now to like try something mm -hmm. a little bit different. Bring your body online. Okay, Lo. Before we get into all your things, I have five quickie questions. Oh. I ask all of my guests. Okay. Super quick. First thing that comes to mind. Be just one word. Biggest turn on. Confidence. Biggest turn off. Control. What makes good sex? Presence. Something you tell your younger self about sex and relationships. Be yourself. What's the number one thing you wish everyone knew about sex? It's really so personal. It's a personal journey. Yeah. yeah. Make it your own. Cool. Make Thank you, own. Lo. Tell us where people can find you. They can also take one of your courses at alignedlifestudio.com. They can just sort of see what we're talking about, which I want people to, to feel mm. this. And what I love, we're offering them a code. Use code EMILY30 for 30% off. So the Align Life Studio is sort of like when I worked with people hands-on for so long and I was like, I got to get this to more people. I can only get my hands on so many people. I was like, I want to create a platform and a resource for people. So there's over 400 flows and practices in the Align Life Studio to help support a healing journey to be able to step into your power and purpose. And a big part of my work is helping people awaken the power of their pelvic floor. 
So I think for your audience, yeah, that course is going to be really resonant for people to be able to move the energy, come and start living in that part of their body again and to become more sensual and enjoy their body and their life. I love that it's so specific too, that it's really yeah. just the pelvic floor course. How can it not impact your sensuality, your sex life, your orgasms? Absolutely. So it's a, the pelvic floor course, okay, coming out in February, so they have to get on a wait list. Yep. Cool. We have a wait list. I'll do it. I now. got on it. I went there last I night. I want you to like, do oh, it. You got to do I'm it. I'm on it. I'm in it. <laughs> Um, okay, where else can people find you? On Instagram. If you just type in Low Rocks, I'll pop up for Low Rocks Bra. And where else? I'm on YouTube now a little bit, giving some stuff away. And then, yeah, the studio is our main place. So, Amazing. Okay, well, we'll yeah. put this all in the show notes so you can find Low. And uh, thank you, Low, for being here. Thank you. you. What an honor. You're amazing. I hope you guys really love today's episode. Lauren is just amazing. She's so talented. She is one of those people who practices what she preaches. She's staying with me this weekend and we're going to be doing all the exercises. And I know I mentioned this in the episode, but I just want to reiterate that if any of you want to take some of Lauren's courses, she is hooking all of you up with a great offer because she's cool like that. And I know you're going to like this. So you got to check out alignlifestudio.com or you can find this link in our show notes. And if you use code EMILY30, you get 30% off your annual subscription to the Aligned Life Studio. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. That's it for today's episode. See you on Friday. Thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. Be sure to like, subscribe, and give us a review wherever you listen to the podcast and share this with a friend or partner. You can find me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Sex with Emily. Oh, I've been told I give really good email. So sign up at sexwithemily.com. And while you're there, check out my free guides and articles for more ways to prioritize your pleasure. If you'd like to ask me about your sex life, dating, or relationships, call my hotline, 559-TALK-SEX. That's 559-825-5739. Or go to sexwithemily.com slash askemily. Special thanks to Acast for powering the Sex with Emily podcast. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com.